Hi there, my name's Ian Buckley Walker and I'm the Bear Gardener and this is my trusted assistant Butch. Uh, we're based in South West London in the UK and we've been asked to give you a few tips on gardening over the next couple of weeks. One of the most common phrases that you hear as a gardener is, I can't even look after a house plant, how am I going to take care of a garden? Well, in actual fact, house plants can actually be quite tricky things. We all know that plants produce oxygen and they take carbon dioxide out of the air. This inside a house environment can create such a big difference. Just simply by having two medium sized plants in your house, you can create up to 25% more oxygen levels at home. So what I'm gonna to do today is just share with you some tips on how to take care of, of indoor plants, because they can be quite tricky. Um, factors that uh, affect planting, such as temperature, lighting, and humidity. And these are all stuff that we can control. So I'm going to give you a few tips today on what to look for when you're caring for inside, yeah, plants inside the house. The first thing I'm going to talk about is probably the most important factor with house plants, and that's watering. There are two things you can do. You can either overwater or you can underwater a plant. The most common, surprisingly enough, is actually overwatering. If you look over here on this plant, it's got a little bit of brown tip. And generally people look at that and the first thing that they think is, my plant needs watering. Now to give you an example of what a plant looks like when it does need watering, I've not watered my poinsettia for nearly two weeks now. And if you look at the leaves, they're actually starting to droop. So there's a bend in the leaf, the leaves are coming, becoming heavy. At the top here is an example of what they should look like, nice, firm and upright. But because it's not been watered, you're getting this droop here. Before you water it, take a, get your fingers, have a little feel around the soil at the top, but more importantly, put your finger down into that soil and feel whether the soil is actually damp or whether it's dry. Pull it out. That's always a good gauge of how wet the soil is. The more soil that's clagged around your finger, the damper the soil is going to be. Because this soil is actually quite dry, there's hardly anything on there. So this plant will benefit from a really good water. Another example of underwatering, if you look in there, the soil shrunk and has come away from the sides of its pot. This plant needs to be submerged in a lot of water and let that water drain back through that soil, let it expand back into the size of the pot. So I would literally just dunk that underwater, leave it in water, re remove it from the water, leave it on the side or in a sink and let that water drain out and re-nourish that soil. Now we looked at this plant earlier, there's brown tips on it, so we know that it's not being underwatered. You've got to have a look at the plant, let's find out why it's got that brown tip. Stick your finger into that soil, loads of mud on my finger, this soil is damp. So let's have a look underneath, lift the pot out. You can see there's water dripping from this pot, and then at the bottom of the pot, excess water. So what's happening with this plant? The plant roots are basically being suffocated by the water and the roots are starting to rot. That's why these leaves are starting to go brown. The most important rule of gardening, DDD, remove dead, damaged and diseased. If you can remember those things, you're gonna go far. So look at the tips. We don't want any leaves on there with brown tips. This plant's going to continue feeding this ugly leaf and it's going to use up excess energy in doing that. Remove the pot from the water. You know, let this drain out. Don't water this plant for a good two to three weeks. Um, the soil levels will then go back to the correct moisture. And in the meantime, as I say, remove anything else that's dead, damaged or diseased. You want a nice, healthy looking plant. Because give that about two to three weeks and that will be back to looking amazing. So we've spoken about watering plants. One thing to remember with their indoor plants is they weren't actually designed to be inside. They were obviously outside and we brought them into an internal environment. Now these internal environments are gonna have big effects on how a plant thrives in a house. During winter here in the UK, we've got radiators that come on. These radiators are obviously warm the house, but what they do do is they dry out the air considerably. And on the flip side, if you're in a hot climate, 
like Australia, when you've got your AC on, that also is going to dry the air out. So what does dry air do to house plants? This Deacon vacuum looks really healthy. We know that it doesn't need any watering because the soil levels are nice and perfect there. But if you look at the leaves, they feel quite crispy. That's because the dry fake air that we're creating in this house is starting to actually dry out the leaves. Now you can remedy this. And here's my totes mask demister here. Just by giving this plant leaves a spray. The water is absorbed directly into the leaf without you actually having to adjust the uh, uh, moisture levels in the soil. And doing this a couple of times a week will have such a benefit on the... We're back here with my lovely points. So to talk about my next point. That's the pot size. This is quite important for the plant. And this is what can create quite a lot of issues for the plants that you're trying to look after in your home. Now generally when you buy a plant, they put it in a tiny little pot with very limited amount of soil because it's cheaper for them to produce and it's cheaper for them to sell. One of the things that I would always recommend when you get a new pot, or a new plant, is to actually pull it out of its base. Have a look at the root ball there. Now as you can see, this root ball is already being twisted around uh, the soil levels. There's a lot of root on show, which means to me that needs to be repotted into a slightly larger pot to allow those roots to really grow into that soil and be able to feed off that soil properly. So if you're thinking of choosing a house plant, what house plants can I recommend that to you will clean the environment of carbon dioxide, produce lots of oxygen for you, easy to maintain and easy to look after. I'll give you a few for example. So my first plant that I'm going to introduce to that is so easy to look after yet so difficult to pronounce is the Dracaena trifisciata, also known as the snake plant or mother's tongue. You can't kill these babies. You can underwater them, leave them for months on end and they just seem to thrive. Whilst they're not the most attractive of plants, they can produce massive amounts of oxygen and these plants actually do are one of the top producers of oxygens for indoor plants. The second part is the Monstera deliciosa or the cheese plant. Once again, these produce massive amounts of oxygen for you. They draw in all the carbon dioxide from in the air, so they're really good for being around the house. The last plant I could recommend is a Diefenbachia. We showed you one of these earlier when I was misting it back in the house. They're relatively easy to look after. Now with all of these plants, one thing that I would make sure that you get is go for a medium size. If the pot's too small, you risk the pot and the soil drying out really quickly. So keep the pot size nice and large. Medium sized plant, not too big, not too small. So I would suggest something around this kind of height here. Well, thank you for listening to me. I hope I've given uh, you loads to think about when it comes to indoor plants. If you do have any questions, then you're always more than welcome to email me at thebeargardener at icloud.com. Thank you for listening and see you next time.